Good morning. I'm Chris. And I'm Janine. And welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. And we are at the end of November. Oh my God, it's four weeks to Christmas. Oh geez, less than, because today's 27. Oh my God. Yeah, so we're getting super close. And you know what? I hope if you had any projects that you needed to finish for the holidays for gift giving, that you've got them. If not, gift certificates are a really great thing and Janine sells them. <laughs> I do <laughs> for all of you husbands, boyfriends, and uh, significant or salon others. clients who you know love me. Yeah, I get a lot of her salon clients, but yeah, gift certificates, any denomination. All you gotta do is call, stop in, whatever. I'll even mail it to you if you want. You would think I have everything that I would ever need to buy from you by this point. Oh, but there's always yarn. I know, but you would, there's always stuff. But you would think there's new stuff. I know. <laughs> and then Chagu comes out with new needles. They did. Oh. They did. Okay. Those bums. Anyway. What's going on on the schedule? Okay. So, you know what? Here's December. It's all her. I'm going to be throwing in a uh, basic needle felting and a rigid huddle. I just don't have the dates down yet. Oh, okay. So, by the, when I read. Perfect. But they'll be there. They'll be there soon. So, um, yeah. By the time this video is released, they'll be up there. Um, so, we have macrame christmas ornament wreath remember the ornament workshops are no skill required december 3rd from one to four nice on the 7th from four to eight we have beginners macrame the full awesome. workshop yep on the 10th we have the advanced owl project from 10 to 2 now at this point we have done a few listen to me don't be nice i am gonna be nice <laughs> but if you're taking the owl class i'm begging you Practice your double half hitches and, and your square practice knots. your square knots. Please, please, please. You need to have lots of I sides need too. to have a class that wants to finish the owl. Right. So if you have not had the opportunity <laughs> to get back in from the other yes. owl workshops. Please come join us so I can help you finish. Yeah. She would please. like to see them finish. So, I want to yeah. see you guys successful. Yeah, absolutely. But the more you practice your knots the easier the owl class will be for you. Correct. That's just Correct. all it is, is because you come in and... I know Heather's waiting because she wants to make sure she knows those knots before she takes the work. I love that girl. <laughs> yeah, because it'll help. It and I will. think Regina wants to do the yeah, owl as well, and so it should too. be fun. Yeah. And then on the 17th, we have the angel ornament. So in I December, if you ornament. haven't had a chance to do the wreath or the angel, no skill required workshops. No. Super easy. Super easy. And super we have easy, kits. Super fun. If you want additional ones, we have kits. This is great for kids. Not even a bad idea to pick up a couple of <clears throat> kits and Christmas Eve. Like sit there yeah. with the kids and make ornaments to put on your tree, on the tree together. Oh, you know what? Those little ornament ones are great gifts to give to the teachers. Just saying. Oh, shoot. I didn't even think about that as teacher's gifts. Mm -hmm. That's because my kids have grown. Yeah. I have a lot of school teachers that come in here. So yeah. I didn't probably do that too. About that. So that's it for December. Other than the basic needle felting and the rigid huddle, I awesome. will get those up there. So you can guarantee there's going to be at least uh, one each of those okay. to finish out the end of the year. Alchemy's back. Yes, but oh, we have to understand one thing. Sorry. The store will be closed December 24th yes. through January 2nd of 2023. We will reopen on January 3rd of 2023. She gets a vacation, guys. Uh, well, it's not really a vacation, but I have a week off. I have to do year-end inventory. Uh, but it also gives me time to relax. Christmas. At least you don't have to inventory my yarns. Nope. <laughs> do not. That's a bonus. It is a bonus. Gonna help me this year? Probably. Okay. <laughs> I'm only working one day during my break this year. Okay. At the salon, and I think it's Thursday. All right. The and 29th. So tell me what's going on with Alchemy. Yeah. So um finally, I know. I took a break. We took a break from the middle of September until the end of December because I have too many shows and too much work in teaching classes here and the salon. So we needed a little break. Um also had to give my husband time to get that stupid barn insulated. And, and heated, heated, thank God. Um, so December 28th, right now I'm going to say it's from 10 to 3, 10 to 4. Um, we have open dye day at our studio, um, which for those of you that have taken dye classes with me, you know where it's at. Um, 
you can bring your own fibers, your own yarns. Um, you'll be using my tools, my dyes, and my equipment to dye your stuff. Um, the cost for the day is $50, and I am there to also help you formulate and mm -hmm. troubleshoot. Or if you have a yarn that you've dyed in the past, be it from me or somebody else, that you're like, I just don't like how this turned out. I can teach you how to glaze. Mm -hmm. We can do an over dye. I have my blue that I need to go back and do again. But, I mean, that's fine. I mean, it gives yeah. me that opportunity to go back in and dye that blue yarn a second time so that I can get a more solid, deeper blue that I really wanted. Yeah. So, Absolutely. it's okay. That was the Absolutely. first dye day that I did. That's all right. That. Listen, I it, like the way the chestnut came out, but that blue, I got it. chestnut. I love that chestnut. That's the only color she wants to use. I like brown. <laughs> Gee, go figure. I always have from a kid. It's just one of my colors. I, mean, I like, I have brown. Mm -hmm. It's a black brown, but I have brown nail polish mm -hmm. on. My friend Laura was like, ugh, ugh. I'm like, okay, but she never wears anything but blue. Correct. Her toes, blue. Or what shade of blue? All blue. Or that green. Oh, no. Oh, the green that. was the one time, and I go, <laughs> oh, she did not like me. Get this green off my toes. Um, but, yeah, so the dye day is the only thing and last thing that's going on at the studio this year. Uh, we will resume classes probably in March. I yeah. have not decided whether it's March or April, but I'm going to say probably. I say probably. It depends on how much Depends on how much of my stuff sells at Wild and Woolly. Yeah. <laughs> and how much dyeing I have to do in four weeks to go to Black Swamp. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Kind of I only have four weeks downtime. So, I don't know. I may throw a, I'm. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. See how it you goes. You know, I also want to get in there in the winter because this is the first winter in my studio. I want to work in my studio for a little bit to see how warm is it really how, com like, how comfortable, how is, comfortable it is it and if it's very comfortable who knows i may start popping classes up for february or march um but definitely by april classes will be back in full swing um there'll be at least one sunday class a month um from then through august yeah that'll be fun so there'll at least be one die class a month and Yay. they are always on sunday sorry guys so we have a treat for you guys today. So we are going yes. to be showing you how to do a very plain, basic vanilla warp a rigid huddle room. Yeah. Yeah. And there are videos out there. Um, some are really nice. Some are really confusing. Um, but it's our goal with all the fiber arts we do is mm -hmm. to help make things easier for you. Keep it simple. Right. And this is exactly how I teach it in the store. Mm -hmm. Um, I will be using the Ashford 10 inch samplet loom, which is exactly what I teach on. So it just makes it, um, it's a reinforcing video as well. If you're Absolutely. taking the class from me, I teach per the book. Uh, but this is a great reference to see it in action. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then from here forward, you can look for one of our videos that post a month we'll be showing you a how to something yep how to something i don't yep. know what the next one's gonna be we'll It'll let be you know her. in two weeks i know we're gonna alternate <laughs> fun i don't even know what i'm gonna teach you we might be filming at the dye studio oh yeah we'll have to figure it out yeah. we'll figure it out it'll be fun yeah, it will i do other things all right so let's get to weaving let's get to weaving guys okay Okay, so we are set up ready to go to teach you how to do the basic warping of a rigid huddle loom. Again, we are using the Ashford 10 inch samplet loom. On the reed, I have marked my beginning and end. I'm going to be making a six inch scarf, so I have that marked off. It goes into the neutral position. I use collapsible folding trays. I have the loom is secured here. The warping peg is secured over here. And I have this a distance of six feet. Um, you can make it as long or short as you need for whatever project you're doing. Same thing with the width. Um, depending on what you're making is what you're going to do. The first thing we're going to do with your yarn is we're going to tie on to the back beam. And you want to make sure that this is secured well. And we always start with three knots just because we have had things come off. Heddle hook, large end of the heddle hook. 
through the first slot that is marked and you're going to loop it and you're going to pull it through. Now the important thing is the yarn coming from your skein should be towards you and you just walk it down, loop it over the peg, let go. Do not hang on to it. When you come back for the second one, it is really important to make sure that you wrap around this bar. It's sitting on top from the ball, the yarn is. Just reach under, you wanna wrap it around that back bar. Go into the next slot, pull your yarn through. And again, the yarn coming from the skein is gonna to be towards you. Loop it, let it go. When you are actually pulling your yarn for the next pass, it'll tighten up and you'll have a more even tension. The next one, it's already under the bar, so just grab it, pull it up, go into the next one, pull through. Again, just walk it down, wrap it around, let it go. And you're gonna continue in this manner until you get to the other string, and then we will show you the next thing that we need to do, okay? All right, we are almost done. Just a couple more. All right, there's one more pull, because this here is my last one. Go around the bar and pull it through. All right, so now, before we cut, you want to make sure, if you pull it up, make sure you didn't miss anybody, that you didn't do any doubles through the same one, that kind of thing, before you cut your yarn, because you still have an opportunity to fix it. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to cut the yarn back here. And then we're going to tie onto this back beam, keeping that yarn as tight as the rest of it that we can. All right. So there you go. Here we go. From the loom to the warping peg, it's all done. Pretty consistent with the tension there. Now these guys have a dual purpose. And the dual purpose is you want to bring down here and you want to tie around here. Now you want to make it so that you can untie it. So just make a bow. And same thing with the second one. Come down here. Do the same thing. And now for the scary part. So you take your scissors. You're going to pull up on your loop. Just grab it like this. Pull it up so you still have all those loops. And you're going to cut it. And you can drop it and let it go. It is not going anywhere. It is perfectly fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this around the back beam. <clears throat> so what I do... <clears throat> I get my chair. I use my left hand to control the tension of the thread so I can keep them all the same. I lay my hand here so that I can reach up and turn away. Now, the Ashford looms have this pawl system that when you go this direction, it winds around there. You can't go backwards unless you take it off. The yarn separators or the warp separators we will be using in between each round around for the yarn. So this is going to be really quick. You just go <clears throat> one time all the way around. Past your guy. Come on. I just need one. Pick up the one. Slide it in and under. And then keep going one time completely all the way around past the one you just put in. Stepping on my yarn. When you come to the ties, just take them off. It's just to help control your yarn. Then what you do is you want to reset everybody, make sure you have that tension again. Take the next one, put it up underneath, and again, go all the way around, past, Grab the next one, slide it up under, and you do this all the way until 
you have your yarn all wound onto that back beam. And this is a fairly quick process. And because I've done this a hundred times, I can do it a little bit quicker. It doesn't have to be perfect. And those cardboard pieces just help to keep your yarn from falling down in between each other. When you come to the second one, again, let it go. Just run your fingers through the yarn, get the knots out. And let's put the next one on. All the way around past the last one. Put the next one on. And then this might be my last one to go on because the end of my yarn is really close to here. And I want the shortest end to be right about here. And that's right there. So this is how much this yarn kind of stretched a little bit on me because I was bad and didn't use cotton, but that's okay. I have a reason. So there we go. The next thing that you want to do from that point on is you need to make sure that you pull one of the two yarns that are in the slot through the corresponding eye to the right. And you need to take the two yarns and move them up and down and make sure that they're not crossed. This is crossed and you can see it actually crossed back here. You want it so that it's not crossed. It's not the end of the world if it's crossed. It just makes it a little easier to see. I use my left hand to pull the yarn out of the slot that I'm going to put into the eye. And I loop it over the heddle hook. Pull it through. Move both over. Move on to the next one. And again, you want to make sure that they're not crossed. Those two are crossed. Uncross it. Drop the one on the left, pick up the one on the right, and pull it through the hole. And you're going to do this all the way across to the end. And then you get the joy of tying all those guys onto the front beam. So depending on how quick you are at doing this, you know, I haven't even probably spent 15, 20 minutes up to this point from beginning to end doing this process so there we go and then i like to like i said i just like to move them from one side to the next and just keep going and you're going to take your time like i said i've done lots of these so i'm a little quicker at it and you just want to make sure that you pull the correct strand and go through Chris is my cameraman today. I am, I am. Job. It's so hard to be completely quiet. <laughs> I don't do quiet well. It's like, where's the music? Where's the music? I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's always so much noise in here when we're actually doing classes. So. Now I'm going to ask a question while you're doing this. Sure. So when we had our weave-in the other day, mm -hmm. Rhonda um, warped her rigid heddle, mm -hmm. and she did um, two strands per each slot mm -hmm. and through each eye. Yep. Like, what's the purpose of that? Like, why do you and don't you? So that's like a double warp. Okay. Um, And it just gives you... <clears throat> Say you're going to use two strands to weave with. It's like warping two strands. It just makes a denser fabric. Okay. <clears throat> so if you have... I've never done that. Yeah. So if you have smaller yarns, so say she... I think she was using bamboo pop. 
She was. She, using, was. she used bamboo. Weight. She used bamboo pop. And she was using the 7.5 heddle, which is yep. what I'm using. And she double warped it um, because she wanted a thicker material when she okay. was done. Okay. Um, and her piece was beautiful. Oh, I mean, it's what absolutely she was beautiful. Making, well, she know. had she was using the calcs. Yes. Um, as her weft, and it just looked so pretty. She used um, grape in the bamboo pop, so there was a purple. Okay. And then <laughs> the calcs that she was using was yellow based <laughs> with what looked like flowers. Yeah, the way it had it, pinks and greens. Yeah, it was really cool. So, okay, there's the last one. Let me put the guy back over there. All right, so now when you look at this, every slot and every eye has a piece of yarn. Yep. So you can do like that. You can go like that. So it's going to move. So, and we're still in the neutral position. That has not changed. And I want to even out my ends here so that they're close to the same. One of my customers was doing this and I couldn't figure out what she was doing, but you know what? It actually makes it easier. Oh, it does. To tie onto the front if you have them about all the same length. Yeah, I did not do that with mine during yeah. the weave in and I was like, oh, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's 10 inches of yarn on this side and yeah. two on the other. Yep, so. but that's okay. Into the fiber jar. All right, so now what you want to do is I need a little more room here so I can pull that back. You want to find center. Um, I know there are 24 slots and eyes, so I want to do 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then there should be 12 on the other side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This is the middle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull four from the right side, and I'm going to split. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Split the two, and you go over the bar and underneath, and you take your two strands from either side, and you tie a bow. Now, this is the front bar or beam, and this has to be able to be untied later. So there you go, as tight as you can. Then I'm going to do the four on the other side. Same thing underneath. So around. I already know the answer to this question, but some people might not. Okay. Why are you starting in the center? So if you start from an end and work your way across, your thing is going to tip. And you're not going to have even tension across your warp and you need even tension so at this point i'm going to go back and forth until i finish tying on all of them before i start weaving so you want an even tie and you want it to be in front of so i may have gone to an angle just so i can grab my stuff but i push it back and when i tie all of my knots are at the bottom of this bar. It's just where they fall, but you know what? It makes it even all the way across, and you can very quickly tie on. There is another method. Mm -hmm. Lashing um, is another method of tying on, but in the beginning, this is what we teach you because it is quick. If you have issues with your hands tying knots, then lashing is the way to go. Yeah, we can do another video later mm -hmm. and show we'll show lashing. we'll show the lashing because I have to lash to do mine because my hands, with as bad as they are, they don't tie knots very well anymore. Right. Not little knots like that. Macrame knots, yes. Those knots, yeah, no knots, way, Jose. No. I'm going to start wearing slip-on shoes, people. <laughs> so there you go. See, and... Okay. I'm just going back and forth, and then the thing is, when I'm done, then I'm ready to start weaving, and I can just go to town. So that That's is your awesome. basic warp. So there you go. Awesome. Um, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. 
I'm here. This is exactly how I teach it when I am teaching you how to warp a rigid huddle loom. This is exactly how it's written in the instruction books that come with the Ashford looms. It's exactly how I teach you so that you have a reference for yourself when you are going back home and doing it on your own when you purchase your own loom. This does work across all brands of looms. Um, but yes, this is this is the Ashford method. So it's fun. We have a great time with this. And if you want to take the workshop, just give me a call. All right. Anything else? I think no? we're good. We're good. We did good today. You guys have a great day. Um, like the post, the video, uh, share with your friends, um, like us on the website at longtailknits.com, alchemy.com. We're both on Facebook. And don't forget the blue fiber trees out there too. So you guys have a great day and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye guys.